Atoms are the building blocks of matter, and all elements are made of atoms. An atom of an element is an extremely tiny unit of matter that still possesses the properties and characteristics of the element. Think of atoms as the purest form of an element. Each atom contains three subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons that determine the characteristics of the atom and have important roles in chemical reactions. The nucleus is the central region of an atom which contains the tightly packed protons and neutrons. Electrons are moving at high speeds in a spherical region around the nucleus called the electron cloud. Each proton has a positive charge and is symbolized by a P with a plus superscript. Remember the phrase, protons are positive, to help you remember their charge. Each neutron is neutral, which means it does not have a charge. Neutrons are symbolized by an N with a zero superscript. Remember the phrase, neutrons are neutral, to help you remember their uncharged state. Electrons are the smallest particles, with each containing a negative charge. Electrons are symbolized by an E with a minus sign superscript. All electrons move around the nucleus within the electron cloud, but some groups of electrons move within specific regions of the cloud called electron shells. This diagram has two shells. We can represent electron shells in a diagram of an atom by drawing several concentric circles around the nucleus. Here's the nucleus containing the protons and the neutrons. We can also draw the shells in a shorthand form, as in this example of a carbon atom. Each electron shell can hold a specific number of electrons. Here in carbon, the first shell is holding two, and the second shell is holding four electrons. Here's another shorthand diagram of a generic atom to illustrate the maximum number of electrons each shell can hold. The first electron shell is the one closest to the nucleus and can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons. If the atom contains more than 10 electrons, those are placed into a third electron shell that can also hold a maximum of eight electrons. Electrons are always placed into their respective electron shells in a specific order, beginning with the first shell. For example, an atom of phosphorus has a total of 15 electrons. There are two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and the remaining five electrons in the third shell. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Each element has a different atomic number because each has a different number of protons. Think of each atom's atomic number as its signature, just like your handwritten signature is unique and identifies you as being you. The atomic number of an atom identifies the element. For example, carbon has an atomic number of six because it has six protons in its nucleus. And zinc has an atomic number of 30 because it has 30 protons in its nucleus. The net, or overall charge of an atom, is equal to zero. This means that the number of positively charged protons must equal the number of negatively charged electrons. The number of positive charges cancels out the number of 
negative charges, so the overall net charge is zero. Atoms that have a net charge of zero are called electrically neutral. For example, potassium has an atomic number of 19, which means it has 19 protons. Because the net charge of one potassium atom is zero, it must also have 19 electrons. The other important number describing atomic structure is the atomic mass, also called the mass number. The mass number of an atom is equal to the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Even though the electrons have a mass, it is extremely small and negligible, so they contribute nearly nothing to the overall mass of an atom. This is why, for our purposes, we don't factor in the electrons when determining the mass number of an atom. There is a chart used in chemistry called the Periodic Table of Elements that lists all of the known chemical elements and arranges them left to right in rows in order of their increasing atomic number. Not all of the elements are shown in this table. It's an important tool that includes information about atomic structure, as well as helps us understand the relationships between different elements. Each of the seven horizontal rows is called a period, and all elements in a period have the same number of electron shells as their period number. For example, an atom of hydrogen or helium in the first period has one electron shell, while an atom of potassium or iron in the fourth period has four electron shells. Each vertical column is called a group, and the elements in each group share similar chemical properties. The periodic table is a handy reference tool because it also lists the atomic number and atomic mass of each element. The atomic mass is not shown in this example. The atomic number is usually written above the element symbol, and the atomic mass is usually written below the symbol. For example, calcium has an atomic number of 20 and an atomic mass of 40. The atomic mass is the average mass of all of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. It is measured in units called Daltons, or atomic mass units, abbreviated AMU. What are isotopes? We will learn more about these types of atoms in the next video.